スーパーランダムジャパン。なに Since the GTO or Great Teacher Onizuka anime was released on Netflix, I found myself re watching it for like the 10th time in 20 plus years, and more than ever thinking, man, there's no way a show like this, or especially a perverted wild ex biker gang leader teacher like this, would work today. Just as I thought that though, I discovered a new made for TV movie had just been released in Japan called GTO Revival that takes place in modern times. Well, modern being 2024. I could have said the same thing 10 years ago. Anyway, for those who don't know, in 1998, a live action adaptation of popular manga GTO was released a year before the anime was released. The 98 version was a single season. There was yet another live action release that aired from 2012 to 2014. Both live action shows and the anime are all awesome in their own ways, and each worked for its era. I'll surely make a video on the differences between them all in the future, so please subscribe for that. For now, however, I'd like to talk about the newest addition to the GTO franchise, GTO Revival. It's a follow up to the original 1998 live action series, with most of the original actors reprising their roles. As one would expect, it takes place decades after the original, and Onizuka is a gig worker since he has been fired too many times from teaching, all while doing the right thing for his students. So, we're already off to an expectable start. Through the help of his original students, though, he lands yet another job to save a school. For the first time ever, we get to see what a middle aged great teacher Onizuka would be like. The only other approach would have been to make him a boring old teacher who lost his passion and needs to get it back, but I'm glad they didn't take that cliche approach. More importantly, of a modern GTO is to see what Onizuka would be like in an era of constant up to the minute social media content and the coinciding risk of cancel culture. Could such a wild teacher like Onizuka with his crazy teaching antics succeed? After all, even in the previous versions, everyone wanted to have him fired or arrested while his supporters protected him. How can a school keep tabs on such a menace when the students themselves are the media? Well, in typical GTO fashion, Eikichi doesn't care. He keeps with his own way of behaving and teaching, all with a seemingly more mature approach. For starters, he's not portrayed as an obvious 22 year old pervert anymore. Anyone who has seen any version of GTO knows that a major humor point of the series before was that students knew he's a pervert but didn't care because he's honest about it. And the whole way he wins the trust of students is by doing crazy things to help them in their personal lives, going far further than any teacher would be willing to go. Obviously, these would all be red flags nowadays. Teachers hanging out with students every day, even at their own homes, sharing porn with boys and telling girls they have big breasts, etc. So, GTO Revival removes the pervert aspect altogether, letting us assume he's just more mature as one would hope he is, being in his late 40s. He still has a touch of childlike behavior and a natural excitement when people, especially girls, compliment him though, but it's just enough to give him an old man cute or cool factor and not a creep factor. His wild side is also toned down in this show, but not his carefree attitude and act first, ask questions later approach to solving problems. So, the main allure of Onizuka, or the GTO series in general, is still there. Instead of hesitating and thinking out multiple scenarios and their repercussions, he dives in and takes charge regardless of risk or outcome. So, in that aspect, the heart of the original show is still there. However, this leads to my original curiosity Does a carefree attitude work for a teacher in the modern era? Yes and no. The show does a great job of addressing social media effects on modern kids. Everything is recorded and people live and die by their image. They want nothing but likes and negative comments cut like knives. They don't dream because they don't want to deal with putting in effort just to see it wasted, etc. There are a good handful of these conversations that confuse Onizuka as he still lives by the old ways. At one point, a fellow teacher even tells him that teachers who believe in the power of youth and whatnot is old fashioned, and students just need school for learning. Obviously, Onizuka hates being called old fashioned, let alone old anything. While some fans seem to think this all makes Onizuka look like a lesser version of himself in this show, I don't fully agree. I kind of liked the older take on him, mostly because I'm similar. I've aged along with the series and still want to believe in the world and think living in the real world is the best way to do that. Sure, the internet is extremely useful, but one shouldn't get caught up too much online. Like anything that produces dopamine, it can be useful until it becomes an addiction. Onizuka lives in the real world, still carrying around a dumb phone as opposed to a smartphone, and thinks everything on the web is at worst fake or at best just noise. The internet is a place to hide, hiding is weak, and weak people are the evilest of all. He wants everyone to face their problems and attack their dreams head on. So, does it work? I'm not going to spoil too much, but let's say Onizuka does get into a bit of trouble and gets lucky breaks and uses his charm, etc., all in typical GTO fashion. 
It shows that people, especially online, can be judgmental, but the truth, once it gets out, is also therapeutic. It helps that the main antagonist, a famous internet troll, is someone right there in the school. They explain this as soon as he arrives at the school, so it's not really a spoiler. It's just a matter of finding out who it is. Anyway, I think Onizuka would have a harder time if the troll were someone or, or somewhere else. The biggest problem with the show, in my opinion, is that it's just too short. I think most people think that. Onizuka swoops in, does his job, and leaves. It would have been much better if it were an entire series, and it may just lead to that. The original cast all look as healthy and good as ever, and all have kept up with acting for the most part. There are a million stories you could do, and again, I think we need some old-school teaching ways in this modern era. I think it would produce a lot of helpful conversations. Anyway, while I was a bit underwhelmed by GTO Revival, it was still a nice hit of nostalgia. Considering GTO is popping up in more places, namely Netflix, we may be on the verge of a resurgence anyway. That's usually what happens when they start buying up old IPs like Avatar, etc. Until then, I say watch all the original GTO series, or at least the 98 one before you watch GTO Revival. You may still be underwhelmed, but not disappointed in my opinion. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and be good at the